Atrial fibrillation is an abnormal rhythm abnormality, one that we consider in general to be a non-life-threatening rhythm disturbance. It varies from a symptom standpoint to no symptoms at all in perhaps a third of the patients to severe symptoms in patients that are terribly debilitated by the problem. I wish I could have some brilliant way to tell you that we could protect people from having atrial fib. If you protect yourself from developing other heart disease, then that's the greatest way you can protect yourself from having AFib. But unfortunately, even very healthy, very athletic, 30-year-old men will occasionally have atrial fibrillation and it can be a devastating thing for them. The most common patients that have AFib are people that have other heart disease. Patients that have atrial fibrillation in general are at increased risk of stroke and so strokes can obviously be a terrible consequence of the rhythm abnormality, so we're concerned about that. The treatment involves three components. We treat to control the heart rate so patients don't go too fast. We treat to help protect from stroke risk, meaning we use blood thinners or we use a device to help to protect patients from the stroke risk. And then we treat to help keep people in normal rhythm. Patients that have a stroke risk that borders on three to five percent rate of stroke per year, we consider they need to be on blood thinners. Blood thinning medications may cause you to bleed, so we kind of have to weigh the balance between the risk versus the benefit. And for some patients, the blood thinner therapy is almost as debilitating as the rhythm abnormality itself. The most common drug and a drug that we've used for probably 50 years is a drug called warfarin. But unfortunately, warfarin has to be monitored, and that's the debilitating part for patients. There are four new medicines that have been released on the market that um, do not require monitoring. So they've, they've provided some incredible freedom to, uh, to patients. We have been performing catheter ablations for over 30 years now. Success rates for most everything we do is very, very good in the 95 plus percent range. So we're very good at fixing most rhythms. The latest thing that has occurred is that we're now looking at mechanical options to protect patients from stroke. So we're using a new device called the Watchman that we've used here from an investigational standpoint and it's now been released by the FDA. And the interesting thing about cardiology and cardiovascular procedures is that the more we do mechanical approaches to treating heart disease, the better we get. So mechanical means of protecting patients from stroke risk may hold the best hope for the future to protect patients from stroke. When I started in this business, we actually never dreamed that we would fix atrial fibrillation. Now we fix probably 70% of patients that have recurrent episodes, um, and we're getting better. The technology's improving. We're gonna continue to get better. 